Prominent Republicans, including Donald Trump, gathered for the annual conservative political action conference over the weekend, where speakers like Don Jr., Mike Lindell, and Nikki Haley were greeted by the embarrassing spectacle of half-empty rooms while they ranted about the usual conspiracy theories and culture war nonsense. But there was one major Republican politician who wasn't in attendance. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. There is, of course, one name looming over all of Republican politics right now, and that's Ron DeSantis, the Florida governor, who's expected to launch his 2024 bid soon. Now, DeSantis' main focus as governor has been using the power of the government to fight so-called wokeism, which, as far as I can tell, he can't even define. It just seems to mean anything that's bothering conservatives and wealthy old comedians. It's basically <laughs> just a collection of petty grievances about meaningless culture war issues like gender-neutral potato head dolls or... <laughs> m ms not wearing sexy clothes anymore. <laughs> a thing they on purpose say out loud all the time. If you accidentally said you thought the green m m was hot in fourth grade, you'd be teased about it until you graduated high school. <laughs> oh, don't open those around Ronnie or else he's gonna melt in his pants. <laughs> if Republicans win it all in 2024, I'm sure their first act right out of the gate will be a law requiring the green m m to wear full BDSM gear. <laughs> It kind of worked on me. <laughs> DeSantis chose to skip the conservative political action conference and give a speech at the Ronald Reagan Library over the weekend where he once again complained about wokeism. I think these liberal states have gotten it wrong. And why are they getting it wrong? Uh, I think it all goes back to ideology. I think it goes back to this woke mind virus that's infected the left and all these other institutions. What the hell is the woke mind virus? <laughs> they should add a Ron DeSantis character to The Last of Us, who's always focused on the wrong thing. That goddamn virus turned my whole family into mushroom monsters. It could be worse. They could have turned into drag queens. Hey, <laughs> hey, Ron, could you shut the f up? <laughs> also, you think the left, you think the left has a mind virus? Let me ask. Let me ask you, which of these sounds more like a mind virus to you? The side that wants to teach accurate history, provide gender-affirming charity to children, protect people from gun violence and safeguard reproductive rights, or the side that whines about not wanting to bang M&Ms anymore, bans <laughs> books from middle school libraries, and watches Fox News all day getting angry about gas stoves and Lego sets. Lego is going woke. The company unveiling a range of new characters in the effort to be more inclusive. Lego says the new characters will promote diversity and understanding. Dear God, a children's toy. <laughs> Promoting diversity and understanding. What's next? Dogs that work as a team? <laughs> to rescue people? Also, the only problem anyone should ever have with Lego is how mad they get when you say the plural of Lego is Legos. A mistake I have made multiple times. Let me tell you, those people are maniacs. They get so mad. Last time I said it wrong, I woke up to find a Lego horse head in my bed. <laughs> That wasn't the bad part. Then it fell on the floor and I <laughs> stepped on it. <laughs> the point is DeSantis knows that the modern GOP doesn't actually care about using government to help people. It only cares about the culture wars. So he's weaponizing government to use it as a tool in those culture wars. He's been engaged in a spree of censorship laws that ban content conservatives don't like, all the way from elementary school to college. And now Republicans in the Florida State Legislature have introduced a bill that would require bloggers who write about Governor Ron DeSantis, his cabinet, or state legislatures to register with the state. So now they're going after bloggers? Why? Did DeSantis get mad when fashion bloggers made fun of the photo of him in his fancy white boots? <laughs> That's a real picture for some reason. DeSantis decided to try out some 60s go-go boots. <laughs> Looks like an Austin Powers fembot. By the way, <laughs> bloggers sound like what those boots are called. <laughs> I'm gonna put on my bloggers and see if I can spear a few swamp clams. <laughs> Maybe it's not the boots. Maybe DeSantis is just mad because bloggers are writing about all the different nicknames Donald Trump has been workshopping for him. Right now, Trump seems to be sticking with Ron the Sanctimonious, which hasn't exactly lit the world on fire, but his allies have said in private that he's been tinkering with some alternatives. You may have already heard that sometimes Trump reportedly refers to him in private as Meatball Ron, which <laughs> personally I think is the best option so far. I mean, why keep digging when you strike gold? I can't believe I'm saying this is Donald Trump of all people, but don't overthink it.
Meatball Ron sounds like a villain on Veggie Tales or a Carnegie <laughs> Deli sandwich named after Ron Perlman. But <laughs> Trump is still tinkering. Apparently, he's mulling some other options. Some of the new ideas that former presidents entertained, Ron Dishonest, Ron Establishment, or even Tiny D. Well, <laughs> Ron Dishonest and Ron Establishment, thanks for playing, but I think we have our <laughs> winner. Ti Tiny D. The first time Trump calls him that to his face, DeSantis is gonna spontaneously combust and leave nothing behind but a pair of empty white boots. <laughs> Ti Tiny D. I bet when Trump finally comes up with the right nickname for someone, white smoke comes out of the Mar-a-Lago chimney, like <laughs> when they elect a new pope, he's a don it, a Donald has come up with a nickname, I let's celebrate by eating a meatball of on. <laughs> So how can you argue with Tiny D? It sounds like something DeSantis should have on a gold chain around his neck, like a failed, <laughs> failed rat. He can call his debut album Woke Mind Virus. <laughs> now, as we mentioned earlier, DeSantis is the name looming over conservative politics right now, which is why it was notable that he skipped the conservative political action conference. In return, Trump took a thinly veiled shot at DeSantis on his fake Twitter site, writing that the only reason certain candidates won't be going to CPAC is because the crowds have no interest in anything they have to say. They've heard it all before, and they don't want to hear it again. But my speech on Saturday night is already a sold-out monster. They are trying <laughs> to expand the room and space. Now, a charitable interpretation for expand the room and space is Trump means they might need a bigger room or a second room for overfill. But again, this is a man who tried to buy Greenland, so he might very well think they were literally considering construction to make the room bigger somehow. <laughs> Just push the walls out. Yeah, we can't do that, sir, because the, there are rooms on the other side of the walls. Won't matter. Just keep pushing. If we, <laughs> if we do that, the other rooms will be too small to fit anything. I know something that can fit in a little room. Tiny D. <laughs> oh, is someone, is someone cooking meatballs? Maybe Trump's crowd was bigger, but sadly, you couldn't say that for every CPAC speaker, many of whom spoke to embarrassingly small audiences, even including supposedly big GOP names like Nikki Haley, Don Jr., and Kimberly Guilfoyle. I'm running for president to renew an America that's strong and proud, not weak and woke. All of us in this room have one message to Joe Biden. It is time to put America first. Is it unreasonable for me to expect, as a citizen of the United States of America, to have a United States senator? Whoa, that looks less like an audience and more like the tour group at a spoon museum on a Tuesday morning. <laughs> I've seen middle school dance recitals with a bigger audience. He looks like he's doing an off-Broadway one-man show called The Real Cocaine Bear. <laughs> hey, could somebody tell C-SPAN to stop cutting to the <laughs> audience? The point is, CPAC was a window into the unhinged nature of the modern conservative worldview. They're all in a little echo chamber, screaming to half-empty conference rooms about made-up bullshit most normal people don't care about. In fact, to show you how disconnected they are from the average American voter, they actually invited the pillow guy, Mike Lindell, to speak on stage about his repeatedly debunked election lies. Thank you, everybody. Uh, what do you think I'm gonna talk about? <laughs> We need to melt down the machines and turn them into prison bars. I got teams of people in every state. In fact, I'm going to announce in a minute this, this new thing I have. It's called the Election Crime Bureau. We don't want to use these machines. We want paper ballots hand counted. I've talked to Germany and France and the UK and Netherlands where they use hand counted paper ballots. Germany, France, UK. All right, I think I know what happened here. Some teenagers have been prank calling Mike Lindell pretending to be different countries. <laughs> Hello, uh, this is uh, France. Uh, we are trying to find L'Homme de Pillow, Mike Lindell. Thank you so much for reaching out. I have a ton of questions. First of all, how do you say election in French? Election. Oh, good, so French is the same as English. And then, of course, there was Donald Trump, who did his usual shtick, rambling incoherently. Like when he talked about the hypothetical scenario of Russia bombing NATO or something. NATO wouldn't even exist if I didn't get them to pay up. But they paid up $449 billion or something, and that's the money they use. They're rich as hell right now. They spent an office building that cost 
$3 billion. It's like a skyscraper in Manhattan laid on its side. It's one of the longest buildings I've ever seen. And I said, you should have, instead of spending $3 billion, you should have spent $500 million building the greatest bunker you've ever seen, because Russia didn't, wouldn't even need an airplane attack. One tank, one shot through that beautiful glass building, and it's gone. Same architect I used in Chicago, great architects, but they didn't have war in mind. But when things happened, that building would be gone in about 15 minutes. They should have spent a $500 million bunker, nice thick ceiling, six inches, six feet of concrete. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> sure, but it's the left that has a mind virus. This. <laughs> This is like watching an HGTV home makeover show where the host has a massive head wound. Okay, I like the subway tile you have here in the kitchen, but I'm thinking instead of a breakfast nook, what you could really use here is a steel-reinforced concrete bunker in case Russia <laughs> decides to nuke your house. Also, barn doors are so 2009. <laughs> As adult as Trump was when he was in office, he's even more scatterbrained now. That's what you get when you move to a golf resort in Florida where the sun fries your brain and you're surrounded by other old weirdos or wait staff who are required to tell you all your ideas are awesome. So that's why NATO should build a beautiful bunker using the same architects I used in Chicago in case Russia decides to bomb them with a tank. What do you think? That sounds great, Mr. Trump. Now, would you like ketchup with your omelet? <laughs> You know, I'm trying to cut down on my cholesterol, so skip the omelet and just give me a big old plate of ketchup. <laughs> but at some point, Trump got to what I assume was supposed to be the central premise of his 2024 campaign, with this startling line about how he could finally complete the assault on democracy he began in 2020. And if you put me back in the White House, their reign is over. Their reign will be over. And they know it. And America will be a free nation once again. We're not a free nation right now. We don't have free press. We don't have free anything. In 2016, I declared, I am your voice. Today, I add, I am your warrior. I am your justice. And for those who have been wronged and betrayed, I am your retribution. I am your retribution. <laughs> he was such a terrible president, and now he's auditioning to be Batman. But <laughs> problem, problem is he would never respond to the bat signal, because there's no way he's ever just looking pensively out the window. You'd have to text it to him or just shine it on Sean Hannity's forehead. Oh, <laughs> you know what you can do? You can project it on a solar eclipse. He looks at those. <laughs> also, that line is so much less dramatic when Trump says it in that soft, sing-songy voice he uses. Like, when Batman says stuff like that, at least he growls. Trump sounds like he's humming a song he heard on the radio. I, I am your warrior. I am, <laughs> I am your retribution. You can count on me. My name's Tiny D. <laughs> Even though DeSantis wasn't a CPAC, he made it clear that his priorities are very much the same. The modern conservative movement doesn't have answers to the very real problems facing Americans today. So instead, they want to use government to fix all the petty little cultural grievances they have. CPAC offered a revealing and embarrassing glimpse into the unhinged modern GOP. They have two terrible choices, a big D that tanked the party in three straight elections, or a tiny D that's no bigger than six inches. Than <laughs> a closer look.